Boy. Delta Team Stu and Dakota on a marathon track. Stay where you are, let the dog go! Corrections detector dog Siggy goes looking for cigarettes and cell phones. Good boy. And Christmas comes early for customs dog Rajax. Just before midnight in Wellington, Delta Team Stu and Dakota have been called to track a potentially dangerous criminal. So we're just on our way to Porirua to try and track in an offender who's done a runner from the sergeant. The sergeant's tried to arrest someone on a warrant, so the sergeant's holding the start point for us and we'll get out there with Dakota and um, see if we can track him. Backup police are waiting at the scene, making sure no one contaminates the scent. This should give Dakota a good, clean start at tracking this wanted criminal. You see me when I've got to the corner and then he's backtracked around. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen him leave. Okay, but cool. He could have the time I spun and didn't you we gone that way. So the last time possibly down the street? Yeah. It may be the middle of the night, but to Dakota, the dark means nothing. Okay. A dog's number one sense is smell. She deploys that powerful nose straight onto the ground, immediately picking up the target scent. The girl, sick. Handler Stu follows to see where she goes. Once in the harness, Dakota knows she's good to go. Dakota takes the first gate in a single bound, while Stu uses his own method. Take the easy way. Dakota's onto a strong line of scent through a number of backyards, so Stu just lets her get on with the job, all the while keeping Officer Joe in the loop. Joe, did you hear that dog hit any stage? Oh, good girl, good girl. Then Dakota spots something. Good girl. That'll be as juicy, I'd say. What was he wearing, Joe? With a clue like this, Dakota's got even more to go on as she hunts down the offender. Copy comps out of just going up into um someone will help me with the school on all my street. Did he get over there, did he? The target is clearly fit. He should have chosen running for medals instead of running from the police. Trying to find an easier way around this fence, eh? Finally, Dakota Stop. thinks he's found the terminus. The man is here somewhere, so Stu updates comms. Comms down six. Still heading north through that school. I think we're getting to the uh, most northern corner soon. Hey, good girl. Dakota knows she's got her man. Adrenaline hits as she pulls Stu towards a thicket of shrubs. Make yourself known now, mate. Come out of the bush. A few days before the Christmas rush, it's all hands on deck at the Auckland International Mail Centre. Customs drug detector dog Ray Jax and his handler Andrew have a massive amount of mail to sort through. It's from all over the world. In each tray you have about 250 letters. So the only tool that Customs can use to screen these is the dog. Would-be drug smugglers love this busy time of year, hoping their prezzies will be overlooked. But for every illicit gift, there's a clever dog like Ray Jax to locate it. Find it. Find it. Before long, Ray Jax sniffs the smell of trouble in a tray of letters. Good boy. Good, man. So Regis just given me a positive indication on this letter tray here. Um, looks like it's from America. Good job, Regis. And now is playtime. Done, hey? Come here, buddy. That's clever. The X-ray image doesn't reveal much, but Andrew trusts Rajax's nose 100%. You can see why we use the dogs, because it's almost impossible for an X-ray operator to see anything in there. I'll take the letter tray into our exam room here at the IMC. We'll open anything that's of interest to customs. At Waikiria Prison in the southern Waikato, a special operation involving corrections detector dog Siggy is underway. Got your toy? Today we're going to go through remands at Waikiri Prison. We're looking for cell phones and any other contraband. Deployed to check the cells is Siggy, a Springer Spaniel who's been specifically trained to detect cell phones and products. He'll also pick up on NRT patches which have drinking tea actually um, in them. That's the contraband that's uh, very, very popular at the moment in the remand type uh, prison cells. NRT or patches are distributed to prisoners to help them give up smoking, but some are using it to make a product known behind bars as Bible paper, okay, which is what they use for um, wrapping the tea leaves into smoke. Siggy's in his element. It's all the same to him to or cell phones. Either gets a reward. Come. But despite his keen attitude, there is nothing he's trained to detect in this cell. 
The next cell gets the all clear from Siggy too. Good boy. But in this cell, Siggy demonstrates a very different behaviour. Good boy. In Wellington, Delta Team Stu and Dakota are searching for a criminal with an outstanding warrant. It's a good girl. He's run from an arresting officer and needs to be found. That'll be his duty, I'd say. The wanted man must be getting hot because he's discarding his clothes, and not far behind him is the ever-eager Dakota. Make yourself known now, mate. Come out of the bush. Dakota keeps her nose hot on the criminal's trail, which leads into these bushes. Where's he gone? Oh, there we go. Good girl. But after a long track, Stu can see that Dakota is tiring. I'm just going to have to sneak into a house and give my dog some water before I carry on comms. With her thirst quenched, Dakota is revived and ready to go again. Stu relocates the track back to a suburban street, and within seconds, Dakota reacquaints herself with the criminal scent. Good girl. Her behaviour indicates her target is close, and the scent stops at a shed. You come out of there, mate. Come out, you put your hands down. You want to lie down on the ground? Yeah, I do. Do it now. Good girl. Push the door open, have nothing in your hands, I'm going to let the dog go. Do you understand? Yeah. Good girl, there he is. Come out. Come out. As the offender out. ventures out, Dakota squeals with delight. It's a good girl. All her hard tracking has brought a positive result. With backup on the scene, the man is placed into a patrol car. He's off to the station to face the music. After appearing in court, the offender received 100 hours community work for breaching bail conditions. Good girl. Running from a police dog isn't smart, especially a dog like Dakota, who's sure to catch him. You're a good dog in your neck today. At Waikiri Prison, a special operation involving corrections detector dog Siggy continues. He's looking for tobacco products and cell phones, and he's just indicated something's under the sink in this cell. They quite often use the actual hot water pipe. From previous cell checks, Morris suspects he knows what this is. It's not tobacco, but it does carry a similar scent. Here we go. Tobacco. This is what's known behind bars as The word is that it's about 12 times stronger than a normal cell when they smoke it, so they get a real decent hit on um, nicotine. So this prisoner will be coming off his uh, patches and uh, will be charged. OK, for having contraband. While Siggy carries on with his checks, Morris does a search of his own. Here it picks up on any metal in the bunks, hypodermic needles, SIM cards, cell phones. And Steve reveals Siggy's latest find. Siggy was right. He just found a uh, Bible cigarette with uh, dried tea in it. With the success of stamping out use, prisoners are resorting to making their own, which Siggy still picks up on. In another cell, a smoking apparatus is found. Just smoking through there as well. The good news for corrections is there are no cell phones or concealed in these cells today. Just the use of authorised patches being used to make the unauthorised for Siggy, this game is more fun than a hundred rabbits in a bouncy castle. Well, that'll do for today. With the job done, Siggy can stand down before getting out of jail free. At Auckland International Mail Centre, detector dog Ray Jax has indicated strongly on some letters just in from the USA. Good boy. Customs dog handler Andrew now needs to locate the suspect letter and find out what's inside. Andrew's well used to spotting the telltale signs of a non-standard item. So this letter here that I've pulled aside is interesting to us because it's going to a PO box, a Christmas card you'd expect to be quite thin, but this has something quite clear in the middle of it. So I'm just going to open this up and see what's inside. The suspect envelope confirms Ray Jax's indication. Open it up and you've got an American dollar bill. Um, it seems like there's been a, a piece of cardboard stuck to the card itself. And you can see quite clearly along here, there is um, another layer attached to this greeting card. Once again, Ray Jax has proved he was right, but Andrew now needs to confirm what kind of it is. 
He applies Custom's latest high-tech piece of equipment, an ID machine called the First Defender. And once the laser has scanned onto the powder, it'll tell me exactly what it is. So it doesn't take long to read at all. It's positive for and as I suspected. Like I said, the X-ray doesn't pick this up, um, so we use the dogs and um, they're a great tool and Rajax has just shown why. The result speaks volumes for the highly skilled Rajax. This five grams of could have fetched up to $6,000 on the street, but instead it's going straight to the customs investigation unit before being sent off for destruction. Well done, mate. That's my boy. Great job by Rajax. What a good boy. In Wellington, the heat is still on for Delta Dog Team Stu and Dakota. They're on to a new mission. Oh, we've just been dispatched to a job up in Newlands. An aggressive man has been causing a disturbance and has run off. While Dakota is waiting patiently in the dog van, Stu questions some youths who he believes are either involved or know something about the case. Who are they? Uh, all I can tell you is a boy and a girl. Why did they run away? Probably underage, but I can prove that I'm all Is that all? Is that all just because they're underage and they've got Probably. alcohol? I can't help you with you. Okay, thank you. Sounds like a flimsy excuse to bother running away from the police, especially when Dakota's on the case. She instantly picks up the scent and pulls Stu along the trail. Come. The team heads straight to Newland School. Good girl. Foolishly, the target gives his position away. Even if he'd kept quiet, Dakota would have found him. Stay where you are, let's talk to him. With Dakota breathing down his neck, the man sensibly decides to do as he's told. Good girl. Although not without a few words of abuse. Oh, tough guy, eh? Whatever. It's a female's dog, you're very smart. Good kill. Stu advises backup of the location, as Dakota makes sure the foul-mouthed man doesn't think about running. Drive the units into the school. Dakota keeps a watchful eye on him until backup arrives. Hey bro, just chuck him straight cuffs. Good girl. Even cuffed and caught fair and square, the offender refuses to calm down. Good girl. Good girl. He finally succumbs and is escorted off to the patrol car. Whatever, tough guy. Keep walking. The man was arrested and taken back to the station where he received a pre-charge warning for obstruction. Really good trick by Dakota, will be a very fast one, but um, you know, it's really good having Dakota on a job like that. Good kill. A busy afternoon at Queenstown Airport sees staff processing six plane loads of tourists from five different overseas ports. It's New Zealand's fastest growing international airport, but the strict biosecurity checks applied by the Ministry for Primary Industries team are the same as any other. MPI detector team D and Sam have a long day ahead. Over here. So far today, most passengers have been compliant. That's until now. So can I just get you a stop, please? Thanks. See. Beagle Sam has flagged a red alert on these red cases. So we're going to have a look in the bags. This man and his companion are Mexican nationals and say they are on their honeymoon. So you packed the bag yeah, today? Yeah. Okay, is there any food in the bag? Yeah, kosher food, yeah. We just passed Kosher is a food production process particular to the Jewish faith, but Dee needs to find out if it means biosecurity regulations before proceeding further. Can you explain what the food is to me? Yeah, hot dog. Hot dog? Yeah. With meat or? Yes, because yeah. we are kosher, we don't need any meat. Any meat. Any meat. Yeah. Yeah. Bringing meat across the border without declaring it is a serious biosecurity breach. Dee's colleague Lee comes over to help. Now, I'll just take it to the inspection area yeah. so we can take it away from the dog. Eager Beagle Sam is excited about his discovery, but Dee's looking at more meat than a barbecue at a butcher's birthday. So that's pork. 
my Spanish is a little rusty. Pork is about as non-kosher as it gets, so the couple's earlier statement is now seriously questionable. I've got more in the next suitcase too. Lee brings back the meat products. Was any of this food declared on your own card? Yeah, I put the kosher food. With a poor grasp of English, the Mexican couple seem to have become a bit muddled. But Sam is sure of one thing, he's owed a reward. Yeah, clever, come on. And returns to checking other passengers. Good. Lee inspects the couple's declaration forms. They have to know, they haven't declared any food. We cannot eat anything in here. We are really, really kosher and we cannot eat anything. I understand. It's the only thing we can eat, please. The young woman thinks pleading might make Lee sympathetic, but the risks to New Zealand's primary industries are too great. The meats are going into the bin, and that's not the only bad news. It was a $400 fine for bringing in undeclared risk goods into New Zealand today. Who wants to take responsibility for it? The husband agrees to pay the $400 fine, so he and his wife can begin their honeymoon in New Zealand. MPI Beagle Sam shows his delight in a job well done by giving the carpet the hair of the dog. Oh boy. After a fruitful morning finding banned items inside Waikiria prison, the dog teams are out in the car park compound inspecting cars for contraband. Drug dog Radar can't wait for his skills to be applied to the task. Who have you come to visit today? The woman driving this car has a bizarre reaction to the sight of Radar. Floods of tears. <laughs> oh dear, all right then, no worries, just relax. What we're going to do now, we're going to have a quick search of your vehicle, OK? All right, jump out then, mate. Radar is thinking these may be tears of guilt, but after bounding into the car full of beans, he finds nothing but the remains of an emotional roller coaster. A manual check also turns up nothing, but suddenly the reason for the tears becomes obvious. She's not meant to be driving. Disqualified driver. So the police are going to uh, take the vehicle and um, they'll be taking her down to the North Bridge where they'll organise for someone to come pick her up. Technically, she can't even move her car one metre, so John does it for her. But then John suddenly finds himself imprisoned. So I've just moved a vehicle over here to get it out of the way and I've gone to try and get out and the door lever doesn't work. I'm locked in, I might have to climb out the window. There we go. Driving while disqualified is a matter for the police to deal with. Corrections give the woman the all clear to visit. No, I'm coming up with you. Okay. The car is loaded onto the back of a tow truck where it will be stored at a collection yard for the duration of its 28 day impoundment. It's proving to be an expensive day out for the family, but at least they will get home safe and sound. Meanwhile, correction staff turn their attention to the next car to arrive. Jump out of the car if you would, come inside there. Radar is hoping to find something a bit more juicy than disqualified drivers. Strangely, he goes from front seats to back, definitely excited about something, but so far not indicating. So Morris moves him on to the driver and passenger. Radar's attention homes in on the woman's wallet. Bear drugs in there, miss? Oh. Yes. Yes, you have. Tell me the truth. If Radar could talk, he'd say this wallet smells naughty. Now you're going to be straight up with me or not? Yeah, you didn't have that. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Good. No. Well, no. What was in there? Um, just a uh, spud. Spud, Kim's. Yeah, and it's top soil. Radar prepares to check her friend, who's confidently cautious. Better not do that to me. Radar circles the passenger, but doesn't indicate on her. All his interest was in her friend's wallet. Lady initially said that there'd been no in there, etc., etc., and then slowly but surely her memory improved, and she remembers that she'd had in there. This has been known to affect the memory. No wonder she couldn't recall if it was there or not. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we can go for a visit. It's decided that the passenger will be allowed her visit, and a plan is put in place for the driver. So I can go and drop her off and then come yeah, back? Yeah, you'll be following the Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, and then disappear? Yeah. And then when visits are finished, you can come back on, pick her up and go. Okay. At 3 o'clock. 
Thank you. All right, see ya. Both driver and passenger are escorted up to the prison. Once again, Dog Raider shows he's a force to be reckoned with when it comes to sniffing out. Good boy! <laughs> 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 <laughs>